Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome to the NC Woodworker Woodshop. As all woodworkers have, one thing all woodworkers have is an abundance of scrap wood. You have little pieces, Lord's pieces, and if you're, if you're anything like me, you don't want to throw out any of your scrap wood. And so I have a box full of just little pieces of wood I just throw into, and hopefully one day I figure out something I can do with them. And I'm going to show you today an idea that yeah, you can use some of the scrap wood to make a pretty good, nice little art project. Cut out a little dachshund dog using just scrap wood. And uh, I think it turned out pretty nice. Here, uh, here's the uh, finished product. For the dachshund, I purchased from Amazon one of these wood cutouts. And with that cutout, I was able to make this dachshund. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I built 11 species of wood here, and I cut them all to a half inch thick, and I jointed all the, the edges, so when we glue the pieces up, they'll be a nice, close, tight fit. Got 11 species of wood here, and the first one is the uh, koa, followed by the mahogany, spalton maple, cherry, oak, cedar, canary, angelin, alder, Laddie and ash. You can see that I uh, cut them all in different widths and different heights. The reason for that is because when we stick our retriever on here, we want to be able to have her fit in all the right spaces here. So I did draw lines here so I can be able to basically know where I want to put it and you also notice I also put a uh, little perpendicular line here on our nose. The reason why I did that is because I want that nose to only be on the koa wood or on the uh, mahogany. I don't want it to bleed over and have her part of her mouth be dark. So that perpendicular line, you can eyeball it pretty good <clears throat> with the uh, line on the on the on the template and the line on the uh, two pieces of wood. So what we'll do now is I'll uh, glue three of these uh, pieces together, five, five, four, five, six together, seven, eight, nine, and then ten, eleven. And then I'll do that overnight, and then tomorrow morning I'll uh, come back and glue them all together. A couple of things I want to show you is that uh, I was really wanting to emphasize the mahogany, the maple, and the and the canary wood. Because uh, we are working with a blonde retriever, not a golden retriever. <clears throat> I wish I had more of the light, all the light color wood, but since I'm relying on scrap pieces of wood, I had to throw in a little bit of a, a little bit of brownish, tannish wood too. Uh, so I'll give you a little heads up on what I'm going to have to be doing next, is other than gluing, is that if you notice that this template here, cut out here, is really thin. I think it's about an eighth of an inch. And when I was working with the uh, dachshund, the uh, material I've seed from Amazon was a quarter inch. And what I'm gonna do here is after I glue it all together, I'm gonna trace out the outline of the retriever on here and then come back and rough cut it with a bandsaw and bandsaw uh, and the jigsaw, not jigsaw, uh, the scroll saw too. It will get in these little tight spaces. One of my concerns is that <coughs> with the dachshund, it was very easy to use a pattern bit on here to cut away the, uh, the wood around the template uh, because it's all smooth, all straight lines and smooth. But with a retriever, you'll notice that it has a little bit of wavy tail, a little bit of hair, uh, wavy hair around the legs and the, and the chest. So I got a quarter inch round over bit. I'm hoping that will do the job. But I can't really get all that tight in there. Hopefully I can, I can just go clean everything up with a uh, bandsaw or a scroll saw. 
And also, since it's only a quarter inch here, I'm gonna transfer this over to this quarter inch piece of plywood. I'll just trace it out, cut it out on the bandsaw and the uh, scroll saw, and uh, be able to get, get my pattern on there and be able to uh, <clears throat> lay that down and glue these pieces of wood to this plywood. And that way I'll be able to use that pattern bit hopefully a lot easier than I'm be able to use on that eighth of an inch plywood. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue up and get everything ready for tomorrow. Okay, I cut the template on a quarter inch plywood. Since this is only like an eighth of an inch. And so what I think I'm gonna do now is glue these two pieces together so I have a little extra thicker board to use when I do my pattern bit <clears throat> on the router. Uh, so I'm gonna glue this back together and uh, see how that looks. You know what they say, you never have too many clamps. All pieces are glued together now. It's still a little rough. And it has all these marks on here and some stains and stuff. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, sand it down and sand it down to a uh, very smooth finish. So let me go ahead and get started on that and I'll be right back. Now I'm ready to prepare the backboard, the backer board for the plaque. A couple things I want to keep in mind here is that when you're working with plywood, plywood has a good side and a not so good side. I want to have the not so good side on the inside of the plaque so you can't see it. Another thing to keep in mind is that uh, when you attach your template to your backer board, you can screw it in and use screws just short enough so it won't protrude, protrude through the uh, back, back of the backer board. The reason why I'd, I'd like to do that is because when you're making a uh, plaque and the backer board, it looks so much nicer without having the holes in it. And you can, you can polish it up, uh, shine it, um, sand it up and polish it up and, and put some uh, a polyurethane on there to make it look, you know, not as nice as the front side, but still look, makes the back side look good. And what I mean by that is that with this, with this backer board right here, have your template here, you can screw, screw the holes in. And then on this back side here that, that, that you see, there are no holes, but this side right here, that will be up against the black. It doesn't matter. So, now I'll just go in, uh, cut this figure out, and get it ready for the uh, router table. I have a one third inch pattern bit on here. I think that's going to be big enough to get most of this off, and even inside the, uh, the tail on the leg. Uh, we'll see how that goes. May have to increase the size of the bit. To, to initially remove the bulk of the material. But we'll see how this goes. And if it uh, doesn't seem to be handling the job very well, then I'll change it over to a larger bit to remove uh, the bulk. Okay, let's get started. Okay, now we have our backer board here. And see where it chipped out a little bit there. I might be able to fix that with a little bit of glue and wood. And we'll uh, clean up the edges a little bit here. Sandpaper. And we have our plaque here. What I want to do is turn this over 
put the retriever right on here like this. And we'll glue this on to this uh, the backer board onto the uh, plaque. We'll just use some wood glue here, clamp it up real good. And uh, I think first I will uh, make an outline here and then remove a lot of this wood so I can get the clamps on a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to just uh, outline this. Make sure I got it in the right position. Trim it up a little bit. Glue it up for a few hours. And then uh, we can uh, do the same thing with the, with the um, pattern bit and smooth it all out real good and then we'll see what it looks like as it turned out the plaque backer board that i just routed out this uh, paw here was damaged beyond repair and i'm afraid to use that because my pattern bit may not be able to create that paw like the other ones so i decided to discard this one and I made another one with a, uh, a higher quality plywood. This is a Baltic Birch three quarter inch plywood and uh, it's just a better quality. It will make the plaque a little bit thicker but that's okay because I rather uh, have a good quality uh, backer board than worry about the thickness of it. So what I'll do now is Got the front side here, which is already sanded and ready to go. And the back side here is just has these marks on there. So that's gonna be the back side. And this would be the back side of the template. So I went ahead and put it on here and I traced it out like so. And I'll uh, go over the bandsaw, trim out all the material here, and I'll glue the retriever onto the back side of this plaque and clamp it up and let it sit there for several hours and then we'll uh, come back and do the same thing with the uh, with the pattern bit smooth it out really nice and get it ready to go and we'll be almost finished at that point I've removed the that exterior excess wood from the plaque and with this backer board on here now, I was really happy with the way the router bit was able to pick up the little hair lines right here and right here and back here on the tail. So that uh, little quarter inch roundover bit, sorry, pattern bit, did a pretty good job on that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna glue this retriever onto the plaque clamp it down really good let it sit for several hours and then we'll come back and use the uh, pattern bit to fill, remove all this excess wood and then we'll have the nice side right here uh, ready to be finished clamps clamps and more clamps at the bandsaw, I was able to remove most of the surrounding wood that was around the template. This will provide less work for the half inch pattern bit that I installed on the router table. Here's the almost finished retriever. Routed out real nice. Didn't get quite the wavy hair right here on the chest. And the tail turned out really good. Down here on the legs, it's a little bit wavy there, but it turned out pretty good. Uh, the thickness of the backer board is probably more than I would like, but overall it turned out really nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boil it down with some of the uh, walnut oil. Do that for uh, about a day, let that soak in real good. And then I'll come back with a special polyurethane I'm gonna tell you about. What makes it special is that it has UV protectors in it, and it's a fast dryer, water-based polyurethane 
So you can put three, four, five coats on here and it really preserves the color of the wood for a long period of time, especially if it's in a lighted area. So stay tuned for that. I saturated the plaque last night with the walnut oil, put an excess oil on the front, the sides and the back, and let it soak in overnight. And when I came back this morning, there was still quite a bit of oil left on there. So I just know that the oil did a great job of soaking in. And as you can see that that oil just makes that wood just pop. You can see a little, uh, the koa wood nose there, the spalted maple looks fantastic. It's canary wood. Uh, that, um, that's just brilliant there. If you have a, uh, golden retriever or yellow lab or something like that, this wood here, you can do the whole plaque and just that wood and it'll look good. But I like the contrast of the different woods, kind of adds a little character to the plaque and this, this emphasizes all the different types of beautiful wood out there. And the backer board, <clears throat> the high quality backer board looks really nice too, and especially back here on the back. You can see that uh, uh, just looks professional done and it's, uh, you know, it looks almost as good on the back as it is in, in the front. So what I'm gonna do next is, I'm gonna, uh, after the, after the wood completely completely dries from the oil, has no doesn't have have that woolly feel finish to it anymore. I'll add this deft water-based polyurethane clear satin. I've used a, this on a lot of my projects, and it does actually protect the wood from UV light because this this dog here is over two years old, and you can still see that the, uh, the color of the wood hasn't really uh, faded out or uh, diminished the the sheen and the sparkling of the of the wood and so <clears throat> i put uh, three four or five coats on here on the front and the back and the sides and uh, we'll see how it turns out after that but i have a really good feeling it's just gonna just uh, the wood's just gonna shine and pop even more uh, so i'll do that today and i'll show you the final result